Hi, welcome to The Virgo Show. I'm Sherry Hansen. Thanks for joining us today. We have a special treat with us. We have Angeline Huffman, who lives just outside of Vergas and who has this little bit of a rose mauling manufacturing place right in your home here, Angie. This is just amazing when I walked in. Um, thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. Yeah, um, rose mauling. Tell me a little bit about it. What inspired you to ever start ro rose mauling? The reason I started was because my ancestors come from Norway. Mm -hmm. My dad was born in Norway, and his family, his mother and dad, Maud and Nellie Jacobson at that time, um, came to America in 1878, mm. which is a long time ago. My dad was only two and a half years old, oh. and they, uh, they came by boat, by steamboat, and they only brought the younger family leaving two of the older boys in Norway because uh, their minister wanted them to be confirmed before coming to America. They knew very mm -hmm. little of America. Mm -hmm. But uh, the boys then came one year later. But my dad had the misfortune of losing his mother. They got here in April of 1878 and she died in June oh. because she had gotten mm -hmm. sick on the ship. And, oh, yeah. She only lived a short time after they settled in Decorah. And okay. they came to Decorah, Iowa, and now Luther College is built yes, where they were. Hmm. So it's, oh, uh, it's fun to go down to Decorah. Well, sure it is. And so you can trace it back, and your love for the rose mauling then goes oh, yes. right back from your family coming over. Um, when did you actually start rose mauling, Angie? I started rose mauling after I had had three children with my husband Jim Glavie mm -hmm. and I got interested because my dad's mother had brought over some rose mauling from Norway okay. and they had kind of odd colors because they didn't have what we have today to work no, with. No, the resources you can just see from your table. And that here. created an interest for me and uh, to this day I can just vision those two bowls that he had. They had warped mm -hmm. and uh, and so then that just... But that inspired me to get started. Certainly, yes. And so, so do you, um, tell me what rose mulling is. Rose mulling is Norwegian painting. The men of Norway uh, were having difficulty supporting their families and they started this art to support their families and they mm -hmm. would paint for people. They would paint in churches. And I did go with a group of uh, rose mallers over to Norway in the Tilmark area okay. at Rolland, uh, Norway. And we studied rose mulling with two professionals and they were very, very good. One could speak English and the other only Norwegian, but I had enough Norwegian in my background that I could understand her. Okay. And if you'd make a mistake, she'd come by and look at, nay, 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 <laughs> which means no. And, uh, and then she would uh, tell us the correct way of doing it. Oh, I bet you learned some wonderful oh, things Oh, we did. There. We did. Yes. We had a wonderful oh, time. Oh, that is great. How do you even begin, Angeline, when you've got... How do you begin? Yeah. I mean, well, like I see, okay, here I have a blank, blank uh, palette right here. <laughs> yes, that's right. This is a plate they call a square plate. Mm -hmm. And this comes in raw wood. And then to uh, start with, we use a liquid okay. and we paint this on and, and then sand. And then There's lots of sanding in our projects. We sand the wood first, then we put the uh, sealer on, which is a wood sealer, and sand again. Okay. And then if we don't feel any of the fibers, then we can uh, put our base paint on. Okay, so you've got processes before you can even start with the base paint. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, there's many, many uh, coats of paint that go on. Your sealer, let's say that you were going to paint this a dark green or a telmark green, which is very popular. Then you would wait uh, and have that dry and sand and put on the second coat. Sometimes you only need two coats, but many times you need three. Okay. And then you need to, uh, because I paint with oils, you need to put a light varnish on it so your oils don't soak into the acrylic paint oh, that's in the base. Sure. Mm -hmm. So 
then you leave that dry for a day or two and then you're ready to put your pattern on. Then you put your pattern on. And so like the colors, if somebody would want to, want to get a piece from you, there's many different colors that they yes. can use and, and yes, that you so. have access to. And how about patterns? How do you determine patterns? Well, if there are different styles, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I do five styles and most of them are acquainted with the Telmark style where you start with a scroll and you might start at the base with a scroll that like such and then you get into the S stroke. Okay. Like they say rose mowing is only two strokes, a C stroke or an S stroke. Yeah. And if you work with your patterns you can see that almost every flower has a C stroke or an S stroke in it. And and then with Telmark you would balance color like across from each other. If you have red here you would have red across. Okay. And the same goes here. If you have blue over here, you do have blue down here. Mm -hmm. And I can show you some pieces that, oh, yes, that yeah. uh, identify that. So then from that. start to finish when you have a piece, how, how long do you, does that n normally take? Uh, a plate like this, if I were to put a Tillmark design on it, it, it would take two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want too many colors, but each color has three values, which means you have the dark, the medium, and the light. Like if you have green, you have dark, medium, and light. And the same goes for the red or black. Any mm -hmm. color, you have three values of color. And, and one thing that I know a lot of people will want to know too is, are you able, are these utilized? Are, are you able to use them actually as yes, serving dishes? Yes, my plates you can use. You can. Uh, because of the finish I put on them, and all you need to do to, let's say you served sandwiches on a tr tray or a plate, mm -hmm. is just to wipe it with a nice warm cloth and okay. dry it. Okay. Never put it in a dishwasher. <laughs> no, that's true. Yes, yeah, they, yes. Well, Angie, I know we're going to run out of time here, and, um, but one thing I do want people to know is if they wanted to take a class from you, could they do yes. that? Yes, they can. They do offer that. Okay, yes. they, they can just give you a call I've, at home. And I've had several classes in many different areas. And I've had people come in and paint with me. Okay. Oh, that would be so interesting because you've obviously had a lot of training, like having been in Norway and yes. and just by looking at all of your different things and even the supplies that you have here. But mm -hmm. I, c I could sit and talk with you about this for many hours, and so maybe that would be part of the class too that they could just learn as they're as they're yes. painting. Yes, yes, they do. Yeah, I'm sure that they do. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, hopefully that you've been able to um, just get a little taste of what's going on as far as rose mauling. And um, Angie here has just a wealth of information and she's got wealth of resources. And if you would want to take a class from her, that would be great. Otherwise, I know always on Looney Days, she's um, got her products there too that you can look at and all the finished pieces. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to join us Thank here today. Thank you. I and, enjoy. Um, I just, I have a few of your pieces and I know I treasure them. Yeah, Thank I, you. I definitely Thank do. You. On one last note before we sign off today, there is um, someone, Margie Menderman has called in. Her phone number is 342-2023. She has a lost dog. The dog's name is Dante and he's a small brown haired um, Pomeranian Terrier and so if you have any information on that or have spotted him in the Burgess area um, please give her a call at 342-2023. So Angie, um, thank you again for showing us the rose mauling and, and just thank you for taking up this art and being able You're to pass welcome. it on. I enjoy yeah. it very much. There is something to that. Have you passed yes. it on to your grandkids? Oh yes. Yes, I'm sure that they appreciate yes. that and that's a, it's certainly an art we do not want to die. So hopefully you've learned something today and thank you for joining me on The Virgus Show and we'll see you next week.